So this is um, one of my favorite slides when I'm thinking about environmental flows. And you look at the top graph, um, this top chart, and you see all this variability, which we talked about a lot, has a lot of biological um, uh, uh, importance and then you know that's really good for nature right the bottom one shows where we've kind of gotten rid of this um, variability and that's really good for people so it's kind of like thinking about how do we manage these two things right now especially in a state as Sarah said that we are over allocated and um, how do we move forward and try to reconcile these changes that we want to see so <clears throat> I think um, We've all seen over the past few years with the drought and talks of climate change impacts to stream flows that there's a real need to come upon agreed upon scientific foundations for establishing flow recommendations in the state. And it's one thing we don't really have in California um, is a kind of agreed upon framework of how to establish environmental flows or flow recommendations for our streams. And this is coming up in a lot of processes. I was at a, a conference last week around the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, which is requiring um, groundwater sustainability agencies to manage their groundwater for these sustainability indicators. One of them happens to be depletion of stream flow. So these GSAs, groundwater sustainability agencies, are asking the state agencies, well, what does that look like? What should we be managing for to not be depleting stream flows? And everybody looks around at each other and is like, hmm, I don't know. So I think it's a really important time that we're all getting together and talking about this and thinking about ways to move forward with the framework. Um, here is a chart I just looked at last night. I pulled down from BIOS, which is um, the streams in California on the left. It's just all blue. And then on the right are the flow recommendations that have come out of, of Department of Fish and Wildlife over the past, since the 1980s we've been working on this. Obviously this isn't the only process where flow recommendations are being made, but you can see even with DFW um, that we only have this many flow recommendations. I think if we added in, as Sarah said, the federal um, recommendations for FERC and others that we might be able to see these parallel processes going on and that's something we would really like to advocate to, uh, to, to, to see like where are these flow recommendations in the state and are we talking to each other? So at the state level, at the federal level. Um, and so today we've heard a lot of different, we heard a lot of talks today about different approaches for setting in stream flows. And while there are different technical approaches, what we're really advocating for in this collaboration that we're putting together is an integrated, flexible approach to establishing flow targets, recommendations statewide that incorporates these different approaches that you heard today. And so how do we pull all that together? So as you saw in Eric's first um, slide, first presentation, the framework really is looking at the hydrology, the ecology, you know, setting, understanding what you're managing for, or what your, your biological endpoints are, and then coming up with a set of, of flow targets. And that's really what we're advocating for here. And that's the science part, right? So we kind of have a lot of approaches on the science. How do we do, look at hydrology? How do we think about ecology? And, and ha, can we set environmental flow targets? The other two are the probably hardest part um, of our work is balancing uses and how do you implement those? And so what we're dealing with these first three buckets with the hope that we could be influencing these balancing beneficial uses as well as implementation. Um, here's a graph that came out of someone's uh, master's thesis that shows that it's really not the lack of scientific knowledge or know-how to establish environmental flows that holds us back often. It's these other factors that come into play. And so I just wanted to point that out. It's a... Uh, yeah, it's, it's not always the science that's holding us back. It's, it's these other things. So, um, and we have lots of reasons why we, why, um, why we don't have these statewide flow recommendations in the state. And I think often we hear that it's because it's just really hard. 
um, and because you can't agree on a process or you know what what have you. But there, but there are examples out there, and one of them is in Australia, in the state of Victoria, that has undergone a lot of change over their 12-year drought, where they actually went from 30 years ago setting minimum um, flows for streams in the state to this acquisition of a significant um, portfolio of water rights to re that requires active management around um, drought and environmental flows. And so they've come up with a standardized flow methodology um, that was done across the state that that develops these flows objectives in a standardized ways, way, and that's what we're advocating for here. And as we've learned today, there are lots of different technical approaches. Um, taking everybody's slides, throwing them here. So we, we want to talk about then, or what are the key components that you need to be considering when you're thinking about developing flow recommendations for your reach or your region or the state? And so how do you choose what are the key components of, of those deciding on an approach? So what is the system type? As we saw, there's been a nice classification system done with USGS and SWERP and um, UC Davis. So we have that, that already done for us, which is great. One thing that was really important is, is what are the desired biological outcomes? What do we care about? What are we really going for here? Um, what is the relevant spatial scale that we're thinking about? Um, what's the hydrologic foundation, as Ted pointed out, looking at kind of alteration and others? And then what is the management context? Is it a dam, uh, a dam regulated system? Is it an urban environment? And then are there other additional stressors that we need to be thinking about? Um, so there's the system type again. What, what type of system am I in? Can I, can I choose an approach based on a certain system? And I think we've seen some good examples of that today. Rafi showed the Southern California kind of urban environment that might be applicable to other places that are similar classification. Um, we saw Sarah's work on functional flows that would be really applicable to um, dam regulated systems. What are desired biological outcomes? I think that's a step we often forget to do um, when we're thinking about environmental flows. Are we thinking about salmonids? Are we thinking about water quality? Um, what are the, the biological outcomes that we care about? So really, really nailing that as an objective before we start saying we need more flow here or more flow there um, is really important. Um, the relevant spatial scales, so again, are we talking about just a a specific reach, which PHABSIM, which has been the approach that has been taken in this, uh, this state for um, the 22 sites that I showed earlier, or are we thinking about more of a watershed um, or a reach or a region? And so, thinking about then, what approach would you take in those situations? Um, the hydrologic foundation again. What is your expected versus your observed? your observed versus your predicted um, flows. So developing that hydrologic foundation is really important. And so again, then, the approach depends on the context. And we don't have the answers. I think we're exploring this right now with the collaboration that we've been putting together to really try to, to figure out what approaches would you take under these certain situations, depending on your biological outcomes, your hydrologic condition, and, and the context that you're in. So. Um, again, just Rafi's idea, Rafi's uh, talk about the urbanization in Southern California, so that Aloha approach, that flow ecology relationships is really relevant for that region. Um, relating hydrology to the biology, you can come up with some ideas about how do you want to change your hydrology and the implications for management, as you showed us earlier. And then we have um, Sarah's approach, this functional flows, flows approach that has um, been very applicable in a limited flow allocation environment and where you want to be maintaining certain parts of the hydrograph for certain functions of the stream. So those two examples really give us a good idea of, of how you would be using different approaches to come up with that foundation for the hydrology, the biology, and then setting your, your flow targets. 
So that's it. I, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to say we're really, our next steps in this is this a collaborative approach that we're taking with um, TNC, UC Davis, Squirp, UC Berkeley, USGS, and others. If people are interested in getting involved in this, this effort, um, we'd welcome your um, engagement. I think it's a really important time. I mean, things like all of the stars are aligning for us to be doing this um, in the state right now, and so if we could push this forward and actually get to where we want to go in terms of setting flow um, recommendations statewide. And so, again, setting this framework for choosing the best approaches and then utilizing those approaches to, to try to implement and uh, actually see this happen in California. So that's it. So I think now we're going to do a kind of a panel if you guys have any questions.